Okay, hello, welcome. Today we are talking about worship pedal boards. We are going to talk about what you need, what you don't need, what order you need them, what order you need to put them in on your board. We're going to talk about the board, the power, uh, everything that you need to know to get yourself started with a, uh, a pedal board for worship. So check it out. Before we start, uh, everything you see today will have a link down in the description so that um, so that you can check it out for yourself at current prices, in your own currency, etc. Um, keep it nice and easy, give you an easy place to purchase from. Uh, also, if you chuck a set of headphones on, it's going to be a bit easier to hear sound and stuff rather than through computer speakers and that sort of thing, remembering that what we do on YouTube is always limited in compare, comparison to live sound, of course. Uh, but let's get started and uh, hope you enjoy. Cool, okay, so before we get to the board, uh, we need to talk about our tone in general. And tone starts here and here. Uh, skill is a great way to, uh, to better your tone, uh, but then a guitar. A guitar with great tone is where you need to start. All the pedals in the world aren't going to fix a dodgy guitar. Um, so this is where you need to invest first. Uh, I watched a video recently where a guy was talking all about his pedal board and then suggested a bunch of cheap, nasty guitars to people to buy. Um, that's not what you want to do. Start here first and put your money here first. So this is what I play. This is just a Mexican Telecaster um, by Fender. It's the Mexican stuff has really come up in quality now. This is the humbucker humbucker version. Uh, the reason for that is we get a bunch of signal noise, uh, but I do have a uh, knob here where I can split them back into single coils, which I can do today uh, in the studio uh, because I'm not on site with all the dodgy earth hum and all that stuff. Cool, so start here. Next thing is the amp, okay? Get yourself a nice tube amp that you can set up backstage, um, have it boxed, have it mic'd up. Um, the reason you want it boxed is so that you can run it at, at a reasonable volume, um, get the tubes really working to get that tone out of them without overpowering the volume on the stage. Cool, so guitar and then amp, and then we start talking about pedals. First thing you need to think about is do you want a unit that just does everything all in one unit, or do you want individual stomp boxes? My suggestion is individual stomp boxes because your options are basically unlimited. If I don't like this overdrive, I can take it off and put a different one on, or if I don't like this reverb, I can take it off and put the other one on without having to change my delay uh, and then I've got all my settings on each individual thing and it keeps it nice straight and forward and when I want overdrive I hit overdrive when I want delay I hit delay when I want reverb I hit reverb cool and my tuner's right there and on this setup my tuner's on all the time so I can see it. I don't have to go through a bunch of screens to find my tuner when I want it cool uh, so this is this is definitely my preference both in times of in terms of tone and versatility cool um, so we are going to look at my board today but my board is definitely not the be all and end all uh, but we will talk our way through first what our options are what we need to think about um, and then at the end I'll, I'll play a bit more so you can hear a bit more of each tone uh, but first we'll talk so that we're not wasting too much time on that we'll play little bits but not long stuff so you're not listening to a whole bunch of me playing um, so the amp I'm using today is just a cheapy PV Envoy 110 trans tube it uses diodes and stuff to try and sound like a tube amp it's not a tube amp it doesn't sound like a tube amp uh, but it tries to be uh, the amp I normally use is a PV Classic 50 which is great big twin 12 tube, full tube amp um, it weighs an absolute ton uh, which is why I don't bring it home to make videos with. A uh, funny story about that amp I'll tell you at the end of the video. Um, but let's get into it. 
quick run through my signal chain. I have a Boss NS2 noise suppressor. You don't need that unless you're like me and have trouble with building noise. Uh, so I run in my input, out of my send through my overdrives, back into my return and then out my output that carries on. My overdrives here are the MXR custom badass modified um, and the Boss SD1. That's a nice, cheap, basic overdrive. Uh, my power supply there is the Rowan Mini. Uh, we'll talk about that a bit more soon. Uh, Ernie Ball VP Junior, which has a tuner out running into my Polytune Mini. TC Electronic Triple Delay, I've spent a bit more money there. And then another cheap pedal, the Reverb um, Sky Surfer by TC Electronic. Cool, so I was asked recently by a worship leader, he was looking to set up a board for his team and he was asking me what he should buy first. Um, so he thought maybe a volume pedal so that they can do swells. Not really the first place I would go. Um, first, again, first place guitar amp. Um, and just on that note, we will play you a clean sound while we are here. I'm on my neck pickup, it's currently split into a single. Get rid of the delay. Cool, so that's just amp and guitar. Cheapo amp and guitar. If I do that uh, with this set as a humbucker, you'll notice uh, quite a volume difference. We'll keep it on the single just to keep it a bit cleaner for the video. Okay, um, so normally what you can do with the amp, you can set it so that your gain is just um, just at that point of breaking up if you hit it nice and hard. Because you'll hear that's just got a little bit of edge to it. Um, and then your overdrives are basically just going to push those over the edge. This is going to look real funny because my arm's down here and the pedals are up there. Um, that's just where they fit in these videos. But anyway, um, so you'll notice my drive on this SD1 and on this MXR are both set really low. Okay, so my SD1. just used for like real heavy lead stuff. Cool, so that's the reason for having two overdrives, slightly different, the MXR is more of a mid-range. Um, so that is where I would start, I would start with overdrive, I would start with just one. Um, if you're keeping your, if you're on a low budget, uh, the SD1's a, a great overdrive for, for a really, really low price. Um, this MXR is more expensive, and if I was going to spend that much again, I wouldn't actually buy that pedal. Um, and that's probably one that I will end up replacing. Uh, but yeah, for the cost of it, there is better stuff out there. Just do your research across the videos, obviously, like you're doing. Well done. Um, yeah, but first of all, first pedal you want, one overdrive. Okay, just a side note to start with, you also don't need a board just yet. We'll talk about the board shortly, but um, if you've only got one or two or three pedals, you might as well just set them up and daisy chain them together. Okay, once you get into more pedals like this, obviously you're going to want a board to transport them nice and easy. You don't want to set all these up every week. Um, but also you're going to want to look at a power supply, because if you daisy chained all of these, uh, you would your current drawer is getting split um, between all of those pedals and you're not going to get the full potential out of them and you are more than likely also going to get a whole lot of noise okay so this is also a cheap unit which is the Rowan mini power supply it will power eight nine volt pedals 
You will occasionally get pedals that are 12 volt, 18 volt, 16 volt random voltages and you will get pedal power supplies that accommodate for that. This one doesn't, um, but I don't have any of those high voltage pedals, so I don't need it to. I like that it is small, so it doesn't take up a whole lot of room on my board. Keep in mind that you can mount power supplies underneath the board. That one just doesn't fit this board because it's quite a low board, uh, so I don't really have room under there. Uh, it does have a bunch of really bright blue LEDs, like the one on the MXR there, but a whole lot brighter. Um, so I've just put insulation tape off, because you don't want that stuff to be a distraction. It might look real cool, um, but you don't want people to be distracted by your pedal board. Same reason I don't have a great big massive pedal board um, on a small stage, because yeah. You don't want it to be a barrier, you don't want it to be a distraction. Cool, uh, so that is overdrive. Just one to start with. Actually, sorry, before you go overdrive, the first thing you want is a tuner. That, that's a real simple, that's basic. Um, tuner first, because you want to be able to tune without people hearing you. It's all good if you can tune by ear, um, but I mean, I played with Henry Seely once, and I think uh, I'm trying to think whether, I know he had one on his board for his electric, I think even when he played acoustic he, he got one out. Uh, so that you can turn your signal off while you tune, right? Um, yeah, I mean I can tune by ear but I don't do it on stage for everybody to hear it. That's um, just basic. But the way that's run is this Ernie Ball Jr. actually has a tuner out. So you'll see that just comes out and then it doesn't go anywhere else. So what that means is I can have that on all the time, and then to kill my signal, I just take my volume off. And then I can run the polytune. The cool thing about the polytune is you can strum all the strings at once, and you can get a reference there of uh, anything that's maybe slightly out. Okay, so I was showing that A was just a little bit flat. Cool, and then we're pretty good there. So, um, yeah, what, what's handy with that, having it run all the time, is if you you feel like one of your strings is maybe a little bit flat and you're playing something, and you can actually check how accurate those notes are. Cool, so that's nice and simple. Tuner, then overdrive. Next place I would go would be Reverb. Again, this is a nice cheap TC Electronic. They took this range over actually from Behringer. Um, but don't let that put you off, they've tidied it up uh, a fair bit. So this is um, just real basic, real cheap. It adds reverb. Your controls are basically plate, spring or hall. I have it on hall. Then you get a tone, a mix and a level. I have it set there on my board because it's got these great big chunky knobs that I can easily slide up or down my amount of reverb with my foot. Cool, it adds reverb. Um, I normally have just a little bit of reverb from the amp as well, so that um, you got a bit running all the time. And a lot of the time I'll actually have that on all the time, just at a lower amount. Cool, so we've got our tuner, we've got our overdrive, then we've got our reverb, the next place I would go would be delay. So this is not a cheap delay. Uh, delay is somewhere where you're going to want options, uh, so you want to spend a little bit more, um, but I mean something like the Boss DD7 will do a lot of this stuff. Um, this has just got more options and it gives me the ability to layer as well. Uh, so my the thing to look out for on delay is a dotted eighth setting. Okay, a lot of them will have the crotchet, um, sorry, we'll talk division, so eighth note or quarter note, um, but won't have a dotted eighth. You need that dotted eighth because people use it all the time. All right, um, so this has got a whole lot of different divisions. 
uh, but basically I have my three delays on here set as quarter note, eighth note and dotted eighth. Uh, I have them all on analog, analog is one that kind of like fades itself out as it goes. Uh, but there's a whole lot of options here too of different delays you can use and then you get your time, your repeats, your mix, all of that. Uh, this end one here is a tap tempo. You're going to want a tap tempo because that's the easiest way to set your time just to tap it in. Um, and what that does on this pedal is it brings all of those into that timing. So my dotted eighth. <laughs> simple the noise suppressor you, you don't need to worry about that I, I have trouble with signal noise in our building and I don't even have that switched on uh, most of the time and all it's doing is running an effects loop with my overdrives um, I have it there just in case I need it uh, but generally it's fine you just set your gains in the right place and you're all good cool um, with humbuckers as well to help out so that's nice and simple, uh, and then obviously what's left is the volume pedal, okay? Uh, but stick with us, because we're, we're gonna go a few steps further. Um, so the volume pedal is cool for swells. Cool, or quick volume adjustments, but you can do that. You can do that on the guitar, just as easy. Um, it's more that swelling because you can play and adjust the volume at the same time. Um, so the reason that is in the middle of my board is because I want it after my overdrives, before my time based stuff. So this is a general setup of how signal change should go, your drives and stuff first and then through your time base with this in the middle. Okay, um, that's part of the reason I'm doing this video now is to show you while it's set up sort of in signal chain order because I'm going to move some of these around because keep in mind that your pedal board doesn't have to be set up in the order of its signal chain it needs to be set up where it's convenient for you to change stuff so for example stuff like my overdrives and my delay with the tap tempo I want those in my front row uh, where they're easy to get at stuff I'm not going to turn on and off so much like that tuner that stays on, that reverb that stays on most of the time and that noise suppressor that I hardly ever use they can go in my top row because I'm not turning them on and off all the time I don't need to get at them so easily uh, the other thing is you'll get used to what foot you want to be on one of the things I've found annoying is having my tap tempo right next to this volume pedal it's awkward to get to so I want to swap that to the other side from the overdrives and I want to be able to turn overdrives on with either my left or right foot and I want my volume pedal actually on my left hand side now because I actually find it easier using that on my left foot I'm kind of weird, I'm right handed but I do some random stuff like left handed it's just weird, I sweep and deal cards and stuff left handed uh, but I'm supposedly right handed cool <laughs> Random, random information. Cool, so that's volume pedal, nice and basic. It turns your volume up and down. Again, this is this is probably one of the cheaper ones of them. Um, it's called a junior, but as you can see, it's not really any smaller than any other. Um, so anyway, it's, uh, but the, the one thing about that, I actually do a, a review on this, is that it's, it's effectively all that is, is a string turning a volume pot. It's got a little volume pot in there and it's got a string wrapped around so as you move the pedal up and down it just does that and what can happen is that string can break. I haven't broken mine yet but I have read a whole bunch of stuff about them breaking. They, they do sell kits so you can replace it and I think now there is even a steel wire rope version that you can replace it with and that should 
bit the end of it. Cool, but um, my one isn't broken, I don't know. Um, anyway, so that's what I've got so far. Uh, you will notice there's a couple of gaps. Then the next place I would go would be a compressor, uh, just to, to really tighten up your sound going into your board. So after your amp and your mic, and then that goes to the desk, and the desk um, has probably got a compressor on it, but that's all after the fact. Really what we want to do is put our compression before all of these effects, so that would go right at the start of the board. Okay, um, so that would be my next thing. Maybe a clean boost uh, could be handy, just to really tidy up that signal again, and also uh, an octave pedal could be handy now and then. Some of the lead stuff is cool to add another octave in. Uh, I'm not a fan of phasers. These are the things I, I, I don't like. I don't like phasers or fuzzes or choruses. Chor chorus, you might, you might use chorus sometimes. I'll give you that. There are some songs where they use a chorus effect. Um, I very rarely find uh, praise and worship songs that use phasers. Some guys do use fuzz sort of like as an overdrive as well, but I reckon it's just too much. The thing with overdrive is to watch how much you're using. It's good in moderation, um, but you'll get some guys, because I mix sound as well, um, and I'll get some guitarists that will come up. And... This is sound check, right? Okay, cool. Uh, what's your clean sound like? Oh, that is my clean sound. And then when the overdrive goes on, ooh, you can't even use it. It's just a mess. Um, so, yeah, everything's good in moderation uh, from a sound perspective. Trust me, if you got too much dirt, it just creates a mess. Um, cool, uh, so let's talk about the board. Um, the board, I actually built this inner part of the board. The case is a Daikon case. Uh, again, we will have links um, below for all of this stuff that you can check out. Um, so uh, you can see current prices and all of that. So the Daikon board is advertised as a pedal board. It's basically a case with some soft stuff um, on the bottom that you're meant to stick your pedals to. I didn't like that, so I actually built a proper wooden pedal board to fit, custom fit it into the case uh, to house all my pedals and then all my cables can run underneath it, basically. Uh, so I've got a video, I've got videos on the case and how to build that pedal board. It's pretty simple. Uh, and I've got videos on the Ernie Ball and the tuner and the reverb so far. I'll do some other ones. Make sure you click subscribe so that you get all my video notifications. Um, <laughs> uh, we, yeah, we do a bunch of stuff. Um, bass stuff as well. A few other instruments now and then. Cool, uh, but that's basically the gist of it. This is the lid of the case. So it's got these little hinges on the back, they just hook in, I close it down, I latch the latches, I pick it up, and I walk away. So uh, that's nice and simple to transport. Unplug all the um, jacks first, of course. So that is, that is basically the rundown of the board. The trick is to not overcomplicate. Um, and then work to your budget. You know, where do you want to spend money? Where where do you not want to spend money? How much money do you want to spend? A lot of these are cheap options apart from that delay. Um, yeah, cool. So we will have a little bit of a playthrough now, and then I'll tell you the story about the app. Cool. So let's start clean.
So there's a basic rundown of the different stuff. Um, story next. Uh, but while you're here, remember to hit like and subscribe. Um, I hope this has helped you out and given you a bit of direction today. Any questions, feel free to ask down below. Um, story about the amp, the PV Classic 50 uh, that I told you weighs a ton. I went and bought the thing and uh, I'm here in New Zealand. I drove down to Wellington to buy the thing. Uh, dude lived in an apartment. I went up, so I parked just up the road, like just up the road from his apartment on this little bit of a hill and walked down because you gotta walk most places in Wellington. I uh, went up to his apartment, played it, sounded great. So, so I bought it and then I went down, down the elevator out onto the street uh, and then I walked about 20 meters down the road and then I had to sit down and have a rest because the thing weighed a ton. And so what I had to do in the middle of busy old Wellington was I had to walk. I had to walk like 20 meters at a time and then I had to sit in the middle of the street and sit on the amp to have a rest. And uh, I did this several times before I reached a, a taxi stand. So I reached a taxi stand and so I asked the taxi driver for a ride and he said, where do you want to go? And I said, just up the road there. And he was like, well, what do you want a taxi for? And I was like, because this amp weighs a ton. I want to put it in your boot and I want you to drive me just up that little hill, just there, I can see my ute. Um, so, so he gave me a ride, and it cost me $13 to go probably another 60 meters up the road. Uh, and it was the best $13 I ever spent. Remember to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.